For now, this is a high security facility surrounded by a tall barbed wire fence. Entry is permitted only via passport checks. The National Bank kept its records here. After its reconstruction, the building will be open to visitors. Ihor Kulik, director of the National Archive of Remembrance, shows the future repository premises. Old shelves and drawers will be replaced with modular units. Solar panels and heating pumps will be installed here. It is designed to create special conditions for the storage of unique documents. We want to make an archive that dispels myths. These are the myths of history and about the archive itself that it's something scary, something like what we see now, gloomy and dusty, something closed with strict entrance rules. The project design includes a bright reading room, open spaces for exhibitions, conferences, presentations and a room for psychological training. I remember a case in the State Security Service archive when my grandmother finally received a document about her father. For the first time she saw his photo, signature and learned something more than what she heard at home. For an hour and a half she just sat near the reading room to reflect. In fact, it was emotionally stressful for her. Transferring declassified documents from law enforcement agencies to civilian archives is a European practice. Collecting them in one place is a unique operation. There are about 4 million cases across Ukraine in the archives of the State Security Service, the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Intelligence Services and Prisons. Outside it looks as though it has four stories, in fact there are eight. Inside there are almost 13,000 square meters. All documents from Soviet enforcement agencies will be collected in the National Archive of Remembrance. This will be a specific entry point. If you are looking for information about the 20th century regarding repressed family relatives, then you will no longer have to wonder where to go. Documents will be digitized to simplify searches from anywhere in the world. None of the lists of repressed people that are available on the Internet are complete. They do not include victims of the Soviet regime who were not officially rehabilitated. The rehabilitation process is really important for the state and important for the individual. It means the restoration of one's good name and a certain moral compensation for destroyed health or loss of life. The National Rehabilitation Commission overrides Soviet criminal convictions of political prisoners. Appeals are accepted by regional commissions at regional state administrations. If at least some biographical information is known, for example, where they were born, when and where they were arrested, where their sentence was served, the more data can be found and the faster the commission will be able to collect a documentary database from the archives. A single database will help determine how many people are still undeservedly but officially considered enemies of the people, saboteurs and spies. Reported by Yevgenia Boda for UATV.